has a few notations on the side which kind of reinforce the credibility of the existence of, of a program to study UFOs by the government. But not, a, not as much as the one that I'm about to share with you, the next one, which was the Byrne Memo. This came from, um, five, five minutes, okay? This came from Mac McLean, Virginia, postmark, and it was later correlated with the CIA zip code. The pages show scorch marks, and this is uh, the first page of the Director of Central in Intelligence, MJ1, writing to MJ2 through 7, as you can see, talking about MJ Majestic and Jehovah, uh, which is perhaps the real reason for the uh, MJ abbreviations. It also has a signature by Fritz for J.J. Angleton. James Jesus Angleton was the guy who ran the counterintelligence of the CIA for many years in a parallel organization uh, to check on the rest of the CIA. The cover note is relevant. Basically, it came from the leaker who says he's a retired CIA counterintelligence officer. It worked for Angleton, and he says this is the last piece of paper that connects MJ-12 with JFK's murder. And he, it also says that, that at the time is fast approaching when the files of the Majestic Jehovah Project will be pried loose and the public's right to know will begin. Salina is a person who's a secretary for the CIA we also have a leak from. They claim they've been keeping the UFO community busy in, in, in some way, don't know why. Uh, these are the eight tabs that are associated with this and I just got a slide on each one of these tabs. But uh, the first page summarizes the situation that we have, that uh, JFK was known as Lancer at the time, and Lancer was inquiring uh, about activities which we cannot allow. Uh, namely, he was asking more about the UFO program. A uh, deadline for decision, MJ1, uh, Alan Dulles wanted to have the other MJ members decide and agree with the, his proposed ground rules, which are the following eight slides. First, what happens if the president asks about UFOs? Well, how, why is he asking? Declare that it's not a security threat. We'll come to that in just a moment. Uh, on the FB, keep the FBI included just enough to, so they can keep the secret, and the instruction was keep our spies, our back channels there in place so that we know what the FBI is thinking. The intent of the second, third tab was to say that DOD security does not apply to MJ except in the case of a couple of sub, one, subcommittee by the National Security Council, 5412, and some special classified executive orders, which some people claim don't even exist. The uh, uh, intent of tab D was to define Blue Book as in the National Intelligence Estimate uh, and proceed with uh, its role, which was to discredit credibility. And if anybody asks, any Congress Supreme Court, whoever asks, even if they're authorized, uh, even if they're pretty high ranking, tell them that we won't tell them anything about the program. Intent of tab F was on psychological operations. One of the things that has impressed me is the uh, enormous emphasis that was placed in the UFO leaked documents that I have on psychological operations to make sure that we have a sophisticated set of cover stories so that the public really never grasps what's going on. And uh, finally, not finally, but the next to last, is the intent of tab G was concerning biological warfare. And uh, presumably the problem is alien pathogens. When they have a program called Spike and House Cleaning that's already in place, but they have a plan for backup using MK Ultra. And MK Ultra, as some of you may know, was an illegal, unethical program for mind control using chemicals of the day. Plus other programs uh, called Artichoke and Domestic, but we don't know what they are. And finally, the, the grabber here was that if it looks like we're going to lose our group and get no more money, then we ought to try assassination. And if, if you look at uh, these words here, it basically says at the bottom, if the uh, weather is lacking any precipitation, it should be wet. And what that is, is uh, commonly known to be is wet is a code word for assassination in the criminal world. So uh, basically, this is an authorization in principle to assassinate JFK. And so, I'll have another 20 seconds of conclusions here, and that is that uh, I think the original paper in ink dating essentially rules out a modern hoax for these two documents. If there was a hoax, it was done then, not now. 
the uh, Bowen marginalia strongly suggests that MJ-12 program existed, and the Byrne memo shows issues between JFK and MJ-12 and reinforces the existence of CIA covert UF proje projects buried in the counterintelligence world. And so, how about that? <laughs> Okay. Courtney, I think you're supposed to come up and chair the Q&A. Uh, what is the question? Uh, you do, yeah. Who would like to ask questions? We have five minutes. Oh, Brenda needs to make a short announcement first. Where's Brenda? Do the questions? Okay, fine. Okay, good. It, it does appear almost uh, um, con convincing. The Byrne memo is, is the most uh, the most extraordinary one. Uh, but uh, uh, something like this, it has such an explosive uh, import that it would seem to me that it could have been hoaxed by some extremely uh, devilishly clever hoaxers. Uh, they could have obtained old paper and old ink and uh, created a, a very convincing fake. Isn't that possible? Well, it, it's always possible to imagine a scenario where there, there is a hoax situation. But the question is, what is the probability of that hypothesis being correct? That's what the SSA typically does, is, is list the different hypotheses and select the, the one that's most reasonable. But yes, that should be on the list of hypotheses. Who's the next, who's another, uh, York? I have to admit that what strains credibility for me the most in this is the amazingly variable level of competence and dedication involved. I mean, if a rogue U.S. government agency had enough clout and enough secrecy to arrange the assassination of a president who was getting too close to the truth, um, why have not you, for example, with all of these leaked classified documents in your possession not quietly been disappeared oh 10 years ago or so <laughs> well that's a fair question actually I <clears throat> feel that the uh, documents are uh, very important I keep them you know locked up pretty securely now however this is the first time I've exposed this level of detail and that document to any audience so I don't think I've ever stated before that that document clearly links MJ 12 with the Kennedy assassination so uh, however, I've enjoyed life, and if I get assassinated, why, that's the breaks. I've had a lot of fun. <laughs> um, Bob, is this thing on? Yeah, uh, Bob, I have a question. Uh, you said that you had contacted the son of Vernon Bowen. Yes. And I was wondering, uh, were you able to determine uh, through your talks with him what happened to any of the other uh, research or papers that Vernon Bowen had well, that's and a, if that's it has been preserved? Because Thank you. That's an that's excellent question of, uh, because... Uh, as, as soon as I found out that he was willing to be friendly and cooperative, I said, well, hey, I got lots of reasons to come to New York City because my sister lives there. She's sitting in the audience, too. But <laughs> and so uh, I said, is it okay for me to come and let's look in, in your father's files? And so he said, sure. So actually we went over to his second house, crawled up into the attic, and, and opened up the drawers to all of his father's files. And we found a few additional papers uh, from what he had, but uh, there was no... Uh, there was nothing that was really uh, an earth-shattering earth result. But thank you, that's a, a good question. There have been reports that uh, the astronauts saw uh, some object on the moon. Uh, did you ever interview the astronauts? Uh, because you make no mention of that kind of a source. Eldridge right. and okay. Well, I do, I do know Ed Mitchell a little bit. In fact, he's participated, I think, in SSE meetings. Uh, but um, one of the things that you find in a, um, in a discipline like uh, ufology that is so broad that you wind up having to specialize. And so I specialize in documents. If somebody were to tell me uh, I, what they saw last night, I would find somebody else to go examine it. In fact, the Mutual UFO Network has a whole arsenal of people who go out and, and follow up on reports, including reports from, from astronauts. Oh, yes. Oh, absolutely. Astronauts are wonderful. But that's not the thing that I do, and I've, I've never tried to interview people. It's not my specialty. 
uh, how well documented uh, is the information 